over here. The music playing. Fleetwood Mac banging away on the stereo box. And with, with neighbors on occasion, right now there's no neighbors, but on occasion, we say hi to the, the neighbors. Yeah, I think those potatoes would be pretty full. doing his number of bow of the boat in the middle of the Atlantic or better the middle of the Gulf Stream off Jacksonville 100 miles or so. It's, it's time for a bath and I guess we get one a bath one way or the other. Here it goes, bath time. Okay, do it. What? Don't break your neck. Two of them. And Sally to the left and Scott to the right. <laughs> Sally's shaking your head as if the whole thing's absurd. It's Fleetwood Mac in the background. I didn't get it. I, I lost my balance. I didn't get it. I lost my balance. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. There he is, folks. Oh, there you. he is, folks. My little whale. Coming aboard. There's the two of them again. Ow! Shoot! That was, that's what happens when you grab onto a uh, hot barbecue set. Here we are. Ten hours later, after the nice calm seas, seas have picked up. See, we're up to four to six foot waves. The wind about 25 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour. One blown lunch. <laughs> Not by this young lady, though. Cleveland Mac is still playing. <laughs> what now? Huh? What? wave pictures. We have a direct north wind, so it's impossible to sail. We're on the 
one weather report that one ship is lost out here with four people on it, so it can't be us. <laughs> Unless they were reporting us with... Yeah. Battery. Okay, here we are at the Belle Isle Marina, and uh, we arrived last night around 9.30. Uh, it took us maybe, I guess, six hours to get in over a uh, incredibly long jetty and north winds, and we were way down south, and two rip sails, plenty of hard work, finally got in. 10.30, and I'm about to leave the Belle Isle Marina at Georgetown, South Carolina, and head up to Beaufort. This entire marina, by the way, was destroyed by Hugo, and uh, it's about 75% completed. The dredge over there. Mm. All right, here we are, and this is Santana Dock. Yeah, I don't know what the problem with it is. A little problem with the camera there. Pulling in hoses, got full tanks of water. We're still low on diesel. We're gonna go up and get some diesel from another marina. And uh, there's Captain Peter. He's pulling in the hose. Boat's all washed down. He's ready to go. Dredge is over here. A little bit wet, so we're not gonna keep the camera going too long. And uh, oh yeah, please a word from our sponsor. We're from your sponsor. We're ready to leave. Fair winds, good seas. Not going up, so not that crazy. Okay, we're going up the intercoastal. We're going from uh, Georgetown up to Beaufort and uh, onwards. And if you look over here, if you look right over here, this is where Captain Peter um, tied. Well, not this spring line. This is what Captain First Mate Scott did. This tie line here. But uh, there was a uh, little secret between the camera and I. He tied. He brought out his spring line, tied it approximately here, and then what he did is he took the other end of the spring line and tied it approximately there on the boat which really didn't seem to do any good because it wasn't tied to the dock. Uh, but anyhow, boat's still here and hasn't gone anywhere. And uh, this is a ripped sail up near the top. You can just the tear right there. We'll zoom in on the tear. And that's going to be fixed by our buddy Skip in Beaufort. Okay. We'll see you on next showing. Time that we're leaving is 10.41. into this wonderful weather. All right, uh, Captain's vlog here. And it's 29th, which is Thursday. We're working our way up the uh, intercoastal at this point. And I've just come downstairs. The weather report, say, the weather report that we heard, I'm going to bring this on here for you. Well, listen to coming over here to the radio. Now, 
We're now not tonight and Friday over the coastal waters out to 20 miles offshore. A small craft advisory is in effect. Southeast winds of 15 to 20 knots this afternoon. And continuing tonight, seas around 6 feet. On Friday, winds becoming southeast at 20 to 25 knots, seas around 7 feet. Over the offshore waters beyond 20 miles to the Gulf Stream this afternoon and tonight. Winds southeast 20 to 30 knots, seas 4 to 8 feet, increasing to 6 to 9 feet tonight. On Friday, south winds 20 to 25 knots, seas 5 to 8 feet. Tide to Charleston Harbor, low tide at 331 this afternoon, high tide 913 tonight. Newport low at 451 this afternoon, high tide 1123 tonight. Beach low tide at 324 this afternoon. Uh, we just we pulled out of uh, Georgetown, and the weather report is actually more in depth. And it comes up to uh, talking about 35 to 49 winds tomorrow. So very good choice that we came out of this place. Right now, you can see I'm heating up the room inside. Very toasty in here as we go up. I've got the doors shut. The doors are shut just for me. I got my wet clothes here. Wet clothes here. We're just going to go upstairs and take a peek and see what the workers are doing as I luxuriously travel in comfort. Let's see what they're doing. I just went through a tremendous rain battle. Turn the radio down. Okay. We had a tarp here to keep us all nice and dry. Five o'clock at the Waka Wacha Marina. And this is after a big heavy rain. We used this tarp to keep everything nice and dry. Did a good job, but we still got pretty wet. Still Thursday. We've got a full tank of diesel. And uh, as you can see, Sally is working on the tarp. Can I have a smile, please? Uh, smile, please. Smile. Do some work, stop it. <laughs> All right. And here's where we had three hamburgers and two wine coolers. Nice marina. Nice marina. This is where I made a quick phone call to Lynn to tell her about the crack and dent place. And here's this, the Pepsi Cola sign. Waka. Waka Wachi. Waka Wachi Marina. 383.5 mile marker on the intercoastal. Very good. Very good. And this is where we'll be going up the intercoastal. We're at marker number 57. 57, and up we go. So, right now the weather's good. And uh, hopefully it'll maintain this type of um, non-precipitation throughout the night. Okay, fade out. Okay, now we finally got this cover on. And as we and tie it all the way nice and tight, tie it right here. Okay, and going back to Sally. Here we come down and see what. Look, don't get a picture of my what, nose. She has a peeling <laughs> nose. Go away, go away. It's kind of like we're in Nicaragua. <laughs> they're knocking the cameraman overboard. Try me below. Primitive. Primitive part of it, South Carolina swamps. Not much to look at. Jacket needs a bit dry out. Yeah. Switch jacket. Throw that in the water. Huh? Sure. Huh? 
should have thrown that in the dryer. I should have, it's really... Can I go by Francis Ford to follow? Go ahead. Thank you, Martin, of course. Mm -hmm. Sally's driving right now. <laughs> now it's the sea out here. Pretty blind. Some dudes just film trees. River, waiting for the Stokowski Bridge opening at 7 a.m. We uh, got to. Ah, I see somebody in there. Yeah, somebody's up above. We came in here at 9 o'clock last night. Fortunately, I had to wait until this morning for the bridge to open at 7 a.m. The restricted bridge. We're on our way right now. 6.45 approximately. And, uh, just pulled up anchor. And, uh, as you can see there's still mist on the river. And, uh, just absolutely stunning. We will catch up with you as soon as the bridge opens. Through the bridge we go. At 6.57. Yeah. Three minutes extra. here on this travel boat. And here we go, right to the bridge. Ta -da. Ta -da. Thrills. Thrills of that. So there's Cherry Grove on that green sign. And of course, I missed it. I'll try to catch it here. The Highway 17 North or something or other, I think up there. We're about to go under it. In the Harbor Gate Marina Village. With uh, nice blue houses in the And there's a sign right there. It says, oh, I'm getting a, uh, a little funny. Just relax. Tell you, one of the most important things about a swimsuit are the way it fits and how you look when you wear it. A custom designed swimsuit from Lablage fits you perfectly because it's computer measured. And it helps you to look your best because it's made with the most... All right. We got some lines on the tape for some reason now. That's the Riverboat Restaurant. Riverboat Marina. The bridge that we just passed back here. Uh, and went under. A little bit of history to it here. 
which we're going to document. That's the Nixon Crossroads. And the high level on Swing Bridge denote the dividing line between fresh and salt water. South of them, a fishing license is required. Not interesting. Up here we have a lighthouse. And uh, we're very, very, very close to the ocean. So we're uh, taking note of a nice, beautiful lighthouse. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really sailing. We're sailing right up the intercoastal now. And this is the light. And if I'm not mistaken, let's see if we can zoom in on what that sign reads. Right by the lighthouse. I don't think we can. Um, let's come in a little closer. Alright, looks like some type of propaganda for the uh, condos behind it that they're building. Mighty miserably cold out here. But we're doing six knots right now. It's the first time all day. If we've done any speed. Sales at 10.30. So we've been going to seven and now we're finally hitting six knots. I think we're going to see some, some good time here. And uh, there's our tarp over the top. And we have a triply, triple reef main here. Because we have a tear in the second reef. And here we have Scott's own Easy Tack. I guess we'll call this Easy Tack. So that way if you have both uh, jib seats are tied tight, so we can swing either way and still continue to move. Uh, it's called uh, Scott's Easy Tack. Okay, and there's, of course, good luck, uh, buoy 13, because uh, Santana's coming up bringing good weather with us. Okay, now Steven Spielberg is sleeping, so it's me, George Lucas, at the controls, trying to get a good idea of what's going on as we pass the border of South Carolina into North Carolina. Notice the amazing change of the landscape. Yes, here we have that kind of landscape, and there we have that kind of landscape. I was hoping for some kind of sign saying, Welcome to North Carolina. Apparently we're not getting it, so um, let's just pretend. Boy, I believe that's what, what Spielberg called the sign. Oh, there it is. All right, here we are again on March 30th. It's Friday. Five o'clock, getting ready to have the sun set on us, and uh, we're up in uh, Cape Fear now. Cape Fear is off to our starboard here, and we're right along. The sails are full at this point. It's kind of nice, because it doesn't seem like we're getting much speed out of it. Passing by a fairly big freighter ship. like this place is designed to handle a lot larger ships with these two barrels. And there's the Cape Fear Lighthouse yonder. Just a little focus in. There it is. Okay. Sally is taking a shower. Nice warm shower up front. And we're getting ready to settle in for the night. Long driving. We'll probably end up in Beaufort by morning. So we'll, uh, probably catch up with you then, or if anything else exciting comes in, we'll pick up. Any words from Captain? No, it's cold. Cold? Yeah. Cold, but we're driving forward, both for tomorrow. Both for tomorrow. Okay. These binoculars are, they were working so well yesterday, they're working terrible today. Okay, we may be having a little uh, technical difficulties, but... 1020 and we're just coming up to a nice crystal calm screen area. Motoring up. There's a uh, some mist up ahead. Just, just a nice peaceful area. This is in North Carolina. It's about 40 miles away from Beaufort. Should be in Beaufort by about oh, uh, 2 o'clock. 
two thirty. No, three, probably three o'clock. Of course, everything's against us. We're getting victimized by daylight savings time tonight. It is clearly defined. Basketball in particular. If you shoot that basketball that goes in, you get... Okay, here we are in Beaufort, North Carolina, finally. And it's in the morning. Actually, daylight savings time for section 851, almost 9 o'clock. But um, there's the uh, tiny drawbridge, and on the other side of that bridge over here to our left is where the uh, marina and the town dock is. That's where we normally stay. Uh, but this time we came in through a small channel over here, and uh, it was foggy yesterday. Came right down here. Uh, now we're right over here. So this is a brand new dock. It's about three months old. And it seems to be pretty nice. You know, there's no amenities. There's no restaurants. You have to walk about a mile to get to any restaurants. But we're loading up on water. We're going to fix the sails. The two sails. We've got still repairs. And uh, we'll be on our way uh, maybe around noon. And the uh, intention is to go up to Norfolk, or a little before Norfolk, and leave the boat somewhere. And then Lynn and, and I, and uh, maybe Vince and Lynn, and maybe Burton or somebody will come down for the weekend, either this weekend or following, to kind of bring the boat up through the bay um, and finish the trip. It just turned out to be too long of a trip. Okay. Well, that's about it for right now. April 1st, it's funny, about to go, leaving Beaufort and go up into the intercoastal first bridge. <laughs> they got so many, there's flickering lines on this thing now. Oh, now it seems to clear up. We're over here, a couple feet from the shore waiting for the bridge to open. Mile marker 202. Oh, that's so good. Well, good morning, everybody. It's 6:21 a.m. April 2nd, and that makes it Monday. And uh, we're in the wee 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 morning hours. Cruising along, coming out into Alligator Bay, and we're uh, in a little bit of shallow water there. Uh, but that's the uh, up ahead. Those lights, those are the the uh, lights of the barge that, that we've been following all night, and uh, just trudging along right behind him makes it very easy to. Navigate. Um, we'll, uh, the rest of the crew is, is below decks getting some shut eye because there's been, been a pretty healthy southwester last night. You know, when that southwester rolls up around the bay and them stumps, watch out for them stumps. Now it's Captain JR up there in front of us. But, uh, everyone else is down until the sunrise, or at least down until time to get up. So we're going to, in just a couple minutes, rejoin for the sunrise. Uh, for now, we'll sign off. 
Okay, we're just seeing some pink over here. Way off over the uh, tree line. You all in camera land may not be able to see that, but us here in people land, we can see it. Um, we'll uh, catch up shortly as the sky gets brighter. Well, as the uh, sky lightens here, I want to add some trivia notes. We are at mile 102.5 approximately. Um, we are in the wee early hours of the AM, of course, like I described earlier. And we left Beaufort, North Carolina, traveling northward, of course. Left Beaufort at 2 p.m. yesterday. Uh, so that gives us approximately between 2 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. Uh, well, actually, Beaufort, North Carolina, you guys can calculate this on your own. Beaufort, North Carolina was 2.02 miles. 2.02.5 to be absolutely exact. And the uh, time there, obviously, is under 24 hours. And uh, if we all use our fingers, that's 30, 7, 30, 8, 30, 9, 30, 10, 30, 11, 30, 12, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, much better than, than uh, we've predicted, since we've predicted 110 miles in 24 hours. Uh, more pink on the horizon, folks. More pink. All right. I hope we can get that little picture there. That's a nice picture. Get the barge trudging down through the uh, shrouds, going right in between those two pieces of land. Here we are. I wanted to uh, just show you another uh, sailing technique for you know, passages through channels at night. So come on over here, folks. All right, right, right down here we have a spotlight, and the spotlight is shining a beam off the starboard side here. Now what that spotlight does is it allows oh oh we're way off course folks coming back work in six feet of water five feet of water uh oh around here hold on seven coming up coming up seven five seven eight seven eight boy almost made dad think he was back at the high seas again Alright, here we are. Gotta get right behind this guy. This guy knows where he's going. Back into 10 feet of water. Well, it's the technique of that light there, folks, is to uh, allow in the dark to be able to see that side of the um, channel. So all you have to do is just kind of drive 15 feet off the side of the channel and, and you don't have to worry about anything. Well, here we are. We probably need some George Winston music here at this point. Okay, I don't think I'm going to, uh, I don't know how this guy does it, but he manages to keep right in the middle of that channel. Not too much difficulty. I'm going to allow you guys just to just enjoy the purr of the motor. Just observe the sunlight brightening the sky. Forward. Weather predictions today are 50, 50, 50 percent chance of rain, 50 percent chance of rain. So, we're in some good weather. 
please, just sit back and enjoy. Because this is what sailing is all about, folks. Waking up, nice, crisp air. Ten feet of water. Idling, purring. Looking for that next port o call. into a workshop. Generator comes out, drills get plugged in, sanders. All the crew becomes busy little bees. As we continue to observe the sunrise, we just take note of some sailors that are lingering at night, and getting ready to go. They have their lights on, they're eating breakfast, getting ready to stop. Of course, us being the rugged sailors that we are. take on the intercoastal at night or in the day. Nothing can stop us. Let's get a look at that diesel patootie. Anything of that? It's kind of nice. Makes the whole thing work. Look where we came from. <laughs> radio down here is they put the um, they put the, the Soul Brothers on at night on regular stations so it's, instead of listening to regular music all the stations had soul music instead of top 40 and then around six o'clock the regular music came back on
a piece of work. Keep that his sailor is busy this way. Trick of the trick of the captain. Keep the sailor is busy. Captain is busy. Stop using it, huh? Well, let's take a look at something else that Chad did this morning. There's little black, there's little black strips right there. It used to be white strips. He replaced those. And that's good. down the Kortuk Sound after leaving Coinchock and uh, this is we're motoring, motor sailing right now headed uh, 550 up to probably a point where we're going to camp out for the night and then dock the boat uh, and leave it at, near Norfolk area that's in marker number 91 my god it's not close to Weird stuff. All right. Okay. Just kind of stuck, flying right along with those waves. There's a channel way down that way. And we're just flipping right along here. Little bow wave. As soon as the uh, varnish dries, which I screwed up with my handprint. I have to redo, but as soon as that dries, then uh, we can uh, sail with the ship. Let's see who's manning this, this machine right now. There he is, Captain Bly with the soup. Let's start with Chili down there. Raven chicken. Ah. It's awfully cold behind that wheel. Raven chicken makes it better. Up in front. Let's give it a couple minutes, no wait till the lock gets started. Telling me that, look, well, I'm on record now, should I put it back on standby? Uh, and it's telling. Yeah, go ahead, Dusty. 